What I'm trying to tell you all is that what you eat has huge repercussions on your hormones, your bacteria. Every time you eat, you gotta consciously eat. Think twice before you put anything down your stomach. So why fast? Why, why, why do you wanna fast? Because your insulin levels will come down with fasting. If you don't eat, what happens to your insulin levels? They go down, because insulin is only brought on by eating. That's why I make you fast. That's why if you're a patient at CVI, you have to eat only once a day or twice a day. If you're gonna eat twice a day, you start out with that eating, but you must eat in a six hour window. And then no eating the rest of the 18 hours. If you're constantly eating, you're making too much insulin. So you wanna fast so that your insulin levels come down. So then after fasting for 18 or 24 hours, when you then do eat, you're sensitive to insulin. So your pancreas will only make this much insulin with the next meal versus a whole gallon before. So eating in a fasting state produces more insulin than eating in a fed state, where you produce a lot of insulin. We are always eating in a fed state. Why are you eating if you're just fed? Let me ask you, why are you eating? You just had a meal two, weeks, two hours ago. Why do you have to eat again? Are you hungry? You're not hungry? Oh no, but I have to eat. Why? Because, two things. One, you're a junkie, you're an addict. You're an addict. Just like cocaine, just like heroin, you're an addict. Because that sugar goes to the same part of the brain as dopamine. So it gives you that reward center. So now, you have to have your next high. This is very real, guys. That's why intermittent fasting breaks that habit. How do you make a junkie come off his cocaine? You stick him in a room and don't give him any heroin. That's it, or cocaine. So you gotta do the same thing. You gotta play around with your physiology. You gotta play around with it so you don't become an addict. Otherwise, this is, I gotta eat now. You're not hungry, but you still have to eat. You're a junkie. So that's the biggest problem, why we eat so frequently. Number two is we've been socially indoctrinated to eat. It's time to eat. So I don't have an urge or anything, yeah, and if I don't eat, I'm not gonna get cravings that I gotta go eat, I gotta eat, go eat. No, but it's just, it's one o'clock, so I gotta go eat. So I'm saying, why do you have to do that? Who said you gotta eat three meals a day and two snacks? The food industry said that. You didn't say it, your doctor didn't say it. So I want you all to now have conscious feeding. Conscious feeding. That means you eat when you're hungry. If you're not hungry, don't eat. You're not gonna die. Because you see what it also does, it detoxes you. Fasting detoxifies you because you've got all these heavy metals in you and toxins. Fasting is the only thing that gets rid of toxins. Number two, it gives your gut a break so that the bacteria in your gut can reset. Because if you're constantly eating those poor bacteria, and remember, more than 50% of the nutrients that are floating inside your bloodstream are not what you ate. It's what your bacteria have made, metabolized, and released into your bloodstream. So you need the right bacteria in your gut. All of us in this room have messed up your gut bacteria. And those are your friends. You have 10 trillion cells in your body. You have 100 trillion bacterial cells in your body. You are more bacteria than you are human. Think about that for a moment. It's a symbiotic relationship between the bacteria and you. Otherwise, why did God put bacteria in our gut? For what? Oh yeah, I'm just gonna give humans some bacteria, boom. <laughs> just think about it. Why would you have bacteria in your gut? And so much, so many. So you think that a lot of these drugs work because, oh yeah, a doc gave me this drug and, and it goes into my system and I absorb it and it's doing, my no. At least 20% of the drugs are actually metabolized by your bacteria in your gut. And their metabolites get released into your bloodstream. So therefore, if you wiped out all your bacteria, so if we did the study in mice, we do it all the time. Take out all the bacteria, then we give them the drug, no effect. You put the bacteria back again, now you have an effect. What I'm trying to tell you all is that what you eat has huge repercussions on your hormones, your bacteria. Every, every time you eat, you gotta consciously eat. Think twice before you put anything down your stomach. What you gonna eat? You should be eating fermented foods. You should be eating bacterial products. Like you should be eating lots of yogurt and dye and, 
and all you know uh, sauerkraut if you if you live here you, you know which is cauliflower and cabbage that has been fermented and kefir and and and, and balsamic vinegar and these these are extremely healthy for your gut so eat only whole foods please don't eat any processed foods eat high fiber intake from a variety of plants a lot of fiber 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 because the fiber what for who it's not for you you can't digest fiber fiber goes to your bacteria i just told you how important bacteria are. why are you starving them so your poor bacteria they're waiting for their food they only live on one thing that they love which is fiber which is a polysaccharide but instead you're giving them sugar now there are bacteria that live on sugar but those are the bad boys they produce metabolites that are no good so you just invited the 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 the, the worst um, teams to come and play in your backyard the bad guys why are you inviting the bad guys into your gut so kefir sauerkraut kimchi yogurt to improve the biodiversity of your microbiome and non processed foods must be whole foods must be whole must be whole and measure your blood pressures and get your weight down to bmi of 23 and you must do intermittent fasting so you can restore insulin sensitivity which i talked to you about and to improve your microbiota and to improve your leaky gut what is that all about now i'm going to tell you about inflammation a little bit more so if you have a leaky gut the food creates an antibody response therefore you get joint pains mental fog who don't you know that has mental fog who don't you know that's got early dementia already? Where do you think that's coming from? It comes from inflammation from a leaky gut. So if you fix the gut, all of a sudden that person's brain starts working better because all that inflammatory stuff crosses the blood-brain barrier, causes what is known as mental fog. And this happens not only to old people. I do this to a lot of young people. They come and say, oh my God, doc, I'm just, every morning I wake up, I got this fog. My brain is a fog. And then I make them change their diet and the first thing they come back and say, you know, I feel so much alive. I can think better. My memory is better. So you've got to fast. You go to time-restricted feeding. OMAD. OMAD means eating one meal a day. Because your ancestors and you are not such great hunters that you can make a kill every two hours. And stop eating at night. Because you can't bring the carcass into your cave. Because then the hyenas will come into your cave as well and eat you up. So you're supposed to only eat one meal a day and get it over with. Okay. And addiction. Consciously think about it because you are becoming addicted to wheat, sweetness, sugar, caffeine, dairy products, and snacks. They actually cause addiction. You think you're not addicted? I can prove to all of you you are in some way or the other addicted. So these patients come and say, oh, I felt so bad. By 4 o'clock, I was hangry. So I said, okay, so what did you do? He says, I ate, then I felt good. So I said, why do you think you're feeling bad? My sugar went so low. So I said, did you measure your sugar? Yeah, it was 90. So I said, that's not low. <laughs> so they're feeling bad. It's not just low sugar. You're feeling bad because you're a junkie. You're a junkie.